the signs have been pointing to Malcolm Turnbull's uh, prime ministership being terminal. Uh, last week there was the, the leaks out of Cabinet, then there was the unnamed coalition MP threatening to quit unless Turnbull was replaced, which is now, now revealed as George Christensen of the Nationals. Then this week, of course, uh, you mentioned there was the stunning backflip on the Banking Royal Commission after uh, saying for so long that they weren't, weren't going to do it. They, they announced it on Thursday. And then uh, probably worst of all was the New South Wales uh, Deputy Premier and State Nationals leader, John Barillaro, openly uh, calling for Malcolm Turnbull to quit when he was on uh, 2GB uh, with Alan Jones on Friday. And of course, next week is the uh, final uh, sitting week of Parliament before the summer break, which is known as the uh, parliamentary killing season when leadership challenges are launched. So... Uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility that we could see some sort of leadership move uh, this week. Well, yeah, and obviously we're seeing uh, John Howard uh, supporting uh, Malcolm Turnbull here out of an act of desperation. Uh, John Howard is a man who I admire greatly. I've uh, read two of his books now, The Menzies Era and Lazarus Rising, but I don't know how Howard... Uh, has come to support this Banking Royal Commission as well when he called it ranked socialism the other week. So we're seeing backflips, uh, we're seeing a lot of division and we're seeing, uh, you know, toxic, toxic kind of uh, Canberra culture uh, underway here uh, in this last week. Uh, it's, it's always been interesting... Uh... Malcolm Turnbull and John Howard's uh, political alignment with each other because they both come from different factions of the Liberal Party. But when Malcolm Turnbull, when he first ran for Parliament in the seat of Wentworth, uh, Bill Heffernan, who was John Howard's right-hand man, was his unofficial uh, campaign manager. And then, of course, when Turnbull was going to uh, retire after he lost the leadership in 2009, uh, John Howard encouraged uh, Turnbull to stay. And, of course... Uh, there, there was this intervention this weekend, which uh, it was it was pretty uh, uh, a strong endorsement of uh, Turnbull by um, uh, John Howard, who obviously still has a uh, large amount of respect in the Liberal Party. I mean, he's the second longest serving uh, Prime Minister. Uh, that, uh, in my opinion, that might you know, starve off a a leadership challenge in the short term, but in the end it's going to come down to if Liberal MPs, if they feel that they're going off a cliff with uh, Mal Malcolm Turnbull, then uh, you know, they'll replace him. That, that, that's politics 101. It will happen. Uh, and at the end of the day, John Howard mentioned this in his autobiography, he would have been deposed uh, prior to the 2007 election if the party felt that he was not the candidate to win them the election. You know, politics is not a sentimental game. It's not a game, uh, you know, of, of loyalty at the end of the day. It's a game of winning. It's a game of numbers. And I'm sure uh, Malcolm Turnbull, uh, being an incredibly smart man, uh, would realise this. Um, but it seems that he is making all the wrong decisions uh, to get himself canned. And, and this really surprises me. From such a smart man, he does not seem to be such a shrewd politician. It was incredible with the Banking Royal Commission. They said that they uh, announced it to end the uh, political uh, instability around the issue and the, the economic uh, damage uh, caused by uh, speculation. And it was rightfully pointed out if, if you thought a you know, Banking Royal Commission uh, was going to lead to economic uncertainty, why are, you, why are you calling it? That makes no sense. Well, in a sense, fundamentally, uh, Malcolm Turnbull disagrees with the nature of the Banking Royal Commission. So does uh, the, the great John Howard. And Scott but, Morrison. And Scott Morrison. They all disagree with it, but the reason why they're going ahead with it is, is a politically swift move, and it is to take the wind out of the sails of the, um, the Labor Party at the next election. You know, the, the classic kind of line, uh, the, the banks versus the battlers, it will take that away from them. And also, another thing that might give the Liberal Party some hope as well is Sam Dastiari's, you know, apparent uh, corruption as well. They seem to be the two things that the Liberal Party are harping on about 
and uh, they seem to be the life support for the Liberal Party and for Malcolm Turnbull at the moment. Well, uh, T- Turnbull, um, well, I'm not sure if it was his victory, but he had uh, somewhat of an in, uh, important uh, victory last night with the uh, New England by-election, which was caused by uh, Barnaby Joyce uh, being found to be a New Zealand citizen by the High Court back in October. Barnaby Joyce was easily uh, re-elected as the uh, member for uh, New England, and uh, Malcolm Turnbull was uh, by his side uh, uh, during Barnaby Joyce's victory speech, and uh, Barnaby Joyce also offered a a strong uh, endorsement of Malcolm Turnbull's leadership, uh, stating that, you know, it's it's a hard job being, you know, uh, uh, Prime Minister and, you know, uh, Malcolm Turnbull's managing well and said he's looking forward to uh, going back to work with uh, this bloke and he, he's certainly better than uh, Bill Shorten. And given that it's the Nationals uh, MPs who uh, forced this Royal Commission onto Malcolm Turnbull and, uh, dare I say, you know, going a bit rogue uh, in Barnaby Joyce's uh, absence, it's, it's certainly another uh, big gun of the coalition who has come to Malcolm Turnbull's defence. Well, it seems that uh, Barnaby Joyce is supporting Malcolm Turnbull here so the Labor Party don't get re-elected. Now, any sitting Nationals member, well, we've got Senator Bridget McKenzie here in Victoria. Well, she was lucky to get in. But besides that, all the Nationals seem to be in safe seats. If we look at Christensen, if we look at Andrew Broad, for instance, in the Mallee, uh, getting nearly 80% of the vote. If we look at Barnaby Joyce in New England, nearly getting 80% of the vote. The You, you could get Barnaby Joyce, you could, or you could get Andrew Broad, or you could get uh, George Christensen. They could shoot someone in the middle of the street, and their, you know, their numbers might go down by 20%. It doesn't matter. That's why the uh, co- co- uh, that's why the Nationals are standing by Malcolm Turnbull here, even though he's weak. Uh, because for the country, uh, a Labor government would be detrimental. But one also has to remember, I myself have spent a lot of time in country Victoria, uh, one has to remember that the, the National Party in itself is mostly conservative, but it doesn't follow a strict political philosophy. It doesn't have that John Stuart Mill wing and that Burkean wing like the Liberal Party does. It's a country first party. So sometimes um, you will see uh, some uh, policy that is left wing, especially economically. And the other thing is uh, we have to remember uh, historically the banks have always given farmers a very, very hard time. Um, so it's not just the battlers who are angry with the banks, but it is also the farmers. Now, I certainly don't think this is the right way to go about it. Uh, farmers feed our nation. They're great people. They deserve to be treated with respect. But I can understand why uh, there has been this kind of undermining of Malcolm Turnbull's uh, power, political power base uh, from the National Party, um, just purely uh, for their own sake of, I guess, wanting to shore up their base of, of rural and country people who have been hard done by by the banks, who have had their farms taken away, uh, for instance, yeah. Well, New England was an easy by-election for the coalition because Labor pretty much uh, ran dead, which was reflected in the fact that their primary vote was a pathetic 11%. But, of course, uh, the the real test for you know Malcolm Turnbull and the coalition will be the Benelon by-election, which will be in two weeks on uh, December 16th, where uh, Labor is definitely um, launch- having a big uh, effort there with their star candidate, uh, Christina Keneally. And if if that seat goes the, the way of Labor, well, not only will it be damaging for Malcolm Turnbull, but he'll lose his majority in the House of Representatives. If Malcolm Turnbull's Liberal Party loses the Benelong by-election, what will happen is he will be in an induced coma. Uh, He will be relying on the party uh, power brokers uh, to feed him liquefied food uh, when he's laying destitute in a bed. So if he loses Benelong, Malcolm Turnbull is more or less over within the next six months. 
So it is vital that John Alexander uh, picks picks Benalong up because God help us all if Bill Shorten gets in power. I just can't imagine what he'd do. But talking about the Banking Royal Commission, if it's done on Liberal and the bank's kind of terms of reference, it's a lot better than Bill Shorten uh, kind of destroying our whole economy. But, but all in all, principally 100% against it. And we, we, um, we really do hope that uh, John Alexander wins better luck. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.